Your doctor may recommend an autologous stem cell transplant. With an autologous or auto stem cell transplant, you will collect your own stem cells, which will be given back to you after treatment. During an auto transplant, you will be given high doses of chemotherapy to target any remaining cancer cells. When these high doses of chemotherapy are given, your bone marrow becomes injured and will not make blood cells for a period of time. This could leave you at risk for infection or bleeding. Your stem cells are collected and preserved before you receive the high doses of chemotherapy and given back to you after your chemotherapy is complete. These cells rescue your bone marrow and allow for a quicker recovery, so you start producing blood cells sooner, therefore reducing your risk of infection or bleeding. Because you will be receiving high doses of chemotherapy, your labs and condition must be monitored closely. You may be hospitalized during the chemotherapy administration through recovery. Now, depending on your treatment plan, most people can plan to stay near Omaha for four to six weeks during stem cell collection, transplant, and through recovery. Your doctor will determine when it is safe for you to return home. I have multiple myeloma cancer. My transplant completed at 11, 11 a.m. on 11, 11, 2016, memorable date. From my chemo, I was very fortunate that I was able to go to work every day. I was working full time. Uh, you know, my husband and I had lived our normal life. Uh, then when I got to the hospital, I was still feeling well. Uh, I took the advice of my care, my case manager, doctors, nurses, and did what I was supposed to do during um, the chemo that was given at the hospital. It was, uh, was not painful at all to get that chemo. It was very quick. Uh, and then I was admitted as an inpatient. I was at the old hospital, so uh, there were some challenges in the old hospital. Now the new facility is beautiful and lots of windows, lots of natural light, and I think that helps with the uh, healing process. My thoughts coming into the transplant were very fearful. My biggest fear probably was losing my hair. I think that uh, I have a lot of hair. I've always had a lot of hair. And I kept telling the doctor, oh, it's not all going to fall out. And he said, I guarantee you, it will all fall out. And it did. I think I'm glad I didn't know about some of the uh, side effects because I probably would have just worried about them. And they don't happen to every patient. So I think over-preparing sometimes can scare patients unnecessarily. Uh, I had some complications, but not every patient has them. The emotional part of the transplant day was uneventful for me. But I was just laughing and joking and looking at my daughter and looking at my grandson and knowing that they were the reason, part of the reason I was doing this transplant was to spend more time with my family and my grandkids. My long-standing word of advice for someone going through stem cell transplant is it's not for sissies, but it's worth every single moment. I was diagnosed on June 4th of 2020 with multiple myeloma stage three, and it was in 61% of my body. Started chemo on June 5th aggressively, and I had my stem cell transplant on October 1st. Pre-transplant, when they were giving me the chemo, you know, they warned about the mouth sores and using ice to kind of help um, alleviate the excessive side effect from the chemo. That was the most discomfort I experienced, especially trying to swallow sometimes. Um, the day of transplant was exciting and yet scary, especially with multiple myeloma, knowing that it's an incurable disease. Um, I was 55 at the time, and to think that how many more years would I have, and this could potentially extend my life. So for me, being told that this was my second birthday, this was a second time of, of being born again, so to speak, um, was exciting an experience. I think there's a way to be prepared, but still leave the door open for the possibility of the unknown. If you 
seriously pay attention to the information that you're given about it. Not spend all your time on internet sourcing whatever because there's so much crazy out there anyway. And then leave the door open for the possibility of the unknown. So my encouragement to anybody who is going through this process or about to go through this process is use it as a time to do some internal searching as to what's really important, what truly matters in life. Because those are the things that give you purpose. Those are the things that drive you, that help you to be strong when you're feeling at your weakest. There were times when I felt like giving up. There were times when I felt like I can't take this pain or this suffering one more day. But then I had to think about all the things that I had been blessed with in life. And I was able, okay, I can take it one more hour. And when that hour was done, I'm gonna take it another hour. And sometimes that's how we have to do things. When it feels like you can't take it anymore, just take it a day at a time, or an hour at a time, or a minute at a time. That's all you have.